I'm a very lucky guy. I've spent 25 years working some amazing jobs in aerospace, defense, oil field, automotive, and more. I talk to people every day from all over the world, and I try to help them solve the problems in their shops every day. People sometimes ask me how I ended up working at the best machine shop on planet Earth. And although I've spent years now trying to learn everything I could, get better every day, share what I learned with others, and be a positive influence to everyone around me, I wasn't always that way. In fact, if it wasn't for machining, my life was on a very different course that would have absolutely landed me in prison or worse. I've mentioned before that I started working in my grandfather's shop at a young age, between 12 and 14 years old, and later worked full-time in my father's shop. In 1997, when I graduated high school, I knew that college wasn't for me. I despised research papers and homework and boring classes that just made me want to take a nap. So, I kept working at my father's machine shop, but I hated it. It's hard enough to work for family, but this was an old world shop where everything was dirty, rusty, and just not my cup of tea. But, it paid my bills. I kept telling myself that I would never be a machinist. It was stressful sometimes, the work was monotonous, it seemed like there was just too much to to learn and I just wanted to have fun and enjoy my life. The only problem with that was that I had no college degree and no marketable skills whatsoever. I was making $8 an hour which left me around 50 bucks a week after paying my rent and my bills. I didn't even have a car for a long time and was riding my bike to and from work every day. At the time, I would get off from work and go hang out with my friends, drink, and regularly break the law. Without knowing it, I had an awesome opportunity to learn a great trade that would end up making me six figures and enable me to live in a huge awesome home with my future wife and three kids but back then I just couldn't see it and so for the sake of having fun I almost missed that opportunity. One day I was at a bar with my friends and I ended up getting arrested for two misdemeanors. A few days later I bailed out of jail and before I went to court for my first arrest I was arrested four more times. I ended up having to spend over ten thousand dollars in fines and court costs and had to do two years of probation which included several court-ordered classes and a thousand hours of community service. The whole whole time I was working on the side of the highway, cleaning up trash, or working at various nonprofit organizations for free, I was angry. I was working 40 hours a week at my dad's shop and also working a minimum of 20 hours a week for the county. This left me no time to enjoy life and I vowed that I wasn't going to let the justice system control my life. After finishing all of my community service and paying all of my fines and with only one month left to complete my probation, my negative attitude ended up getting my probation revoked. Because I had five criminal charges, this meant that I was potentially going to have to serve a two-year sentence for each crime. I was served a no-bail warrant on the morning of Christmas Eve, and as I sat in jail, I reflected on my poor choices and wondered what the rest of my life was going to look like. My court date was set for March, but after sitting in jail for 30 days, miserable and wishing I hadn't been so stupid, the judge summoned me to court. Now this was odd, because it was still two months until my court date. Now my dad had a partner in his machining business, and when I got to court, my lawyer told me that my dad's partner had written a letter to the judge explaining how I was a skilled machinist that he couldn't easily replace, and without me, he would go out of business. The judge, not knowing that this was also my dad's machine shop, was impressed at the fact that even though I had been an idiot and made some really stupid decisions, I was an idiot that was at least useful to society in the local community. So the judge ordered that I be put on 20 days of work release, pay another $10,000 fine, and then be released. So for the next 20 days, I went to work in the morning and then went back to jail every night to be strip searched and sprayed for lice. And let me tell you, that is not what I felt like doing every day after work. But I finished my 20 days and was once again a free man, no probation or anything. It was at this point that I really understood what machining meant for me. Just knowing how to machine parts had saved me from potentially losing a decade of my life. And that was enough to completely change my mindset and I resolved to spend every day for the rest of my career learning everything I could about what I did in an effort to become the best I could possibly be. And I am still on that same journey. Being a skilled tradesman has saved so many lives. And there are so many stories like mine that you'll never hear about. If it wasn't for machining and changing my attitude to appreciate the opportunities afforded to me, I would have continued to have absolutely no marketable skills, I would have certainly spent a lot of time in jail, and I wouldn't have my beautiful wife or kids. And though having a criminal record will stop you from working some jobs, there are a lot of machine shops that will hire people with a rich history and reformed ways. A CNC machine doesn't care about your past, your race, your gender, your political party. Imagine 
Imagine if the cities that are filled with gang violence and massive prison populations taught their youth a trade rather than things they will never use in the real world. Titans talked before about how there's a direct correlation between losing manufacturing jobs and increased prison population. But if these cities were to build a massive skilled workforce, how long do you think it would take for huge companies to bring factories back to these cities, allowing for these people to build a better life for themselves? Crime would go down and quality of life would go up. It doesn't take long to learn how to design parts, write CNC programs, and run CNC machines. You can literally do it for free in our academy. I've literally met nine-year-old kids that are doing it. There are schools and prisons all over the world that use our academy, and people learn it in a single school year. Manufacturing can absolutely change the course of your life, and I am living proof of that. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you guys next time. Cross the threshold. It's close, man. Boom. Barry, what happened? Once in a while, greatness eludes me. Yeah.